My name is Q Gabriel. I work for Datastax, and I'm going to take you through a demonstration I put together to kind of show the power and differences of the various APIs uh, through which you can access your data in Datastax Astra. So uh, here's our repository. Um, first, we're going to go through the setup here pretty quickly. It, there's not a lot of code. Actually, a lot of these are like, you know, readmes and configs. Um, this page kind of talks you through each of the different files and what they're for, uh, and we'll come back to that. Here's some directions for setting up Astra. So first, let's uh, go get our Datasax Astra database set up. I'm just going to use our free tier. I've already logged in here. I'm just going to name my database stuff, and the key space can also have the same name as the database, and in this case, I will. I'm going to come up with a very creative username and password. I'll let you guess what that is. You'll see it later. I do have to choose my region here. I'm going to do US East and launch that database. So I'm going to go view this. I'm not going to save that password. And we're going to let this come up. And this is going to take, I don't know, a little bit, but uh, we'll pause while that's happening. Okay, so my database is launched. It only took a couple of minutes. Um, and we're going to grab a couple of useful pieces of data that we're going to need later. Um, one, we're going to download this Secure Connect bundle. And that went to my downloads. And I'm also going to click this little clipboard icon here to just copy that URL. We're going to be using that later as well. Really the only part that we're interested in is here at the beginning, but it's kind of, you know, we truncated it because it's kind of long. So let's get back to the repository. Um, so we need to check this out. We're going to do that here. Just grab that little clipboard icon. And I'm going to jump here, git clone that little repository. Uh, all, just a, it's very small, not a lot of files. And now we need to configure our application. The first thing we have to do is that um, that file we just downloaded, I want to drop that in here. So here's my All Astra APIs uh, window. I downloaded that uh, Secure Connect bundle right here. I'm just going to drag it right into there. And um, we can look now and see Secure Connect Stuff is the name of that file. We're going to need that in just a minute. We're going to go edit the config. And here uh, we need to provide the path, the full path to the Secure Connect bundle, which I don't have handy. Oh, well, let me just go grab that. PWD. Uh, so I need all this and secure-connect-stuff.zip. I'll go back into here and put that secure there. Um, these two lines are just for convenience uh, so that we don't have to put the whole Astra uh, URL in here. Really all that you need is the cluster ID and region, which I said, like I said earlier, those were kind of in that uh, URL that I copied to my clipboard. Um, I'm going to grab that off my handy dandy little clipboard utility, which is right here. And I don't need this part at the end, API rest, because uh, we're, we're going to append that to this base URL, base URL here later. Later, so I just need that first part, and let me see if I've got all the configuration there. Um, this is the password that I use. Stuff password, really creative. I know, don't use that in production. Stuff user, and then the key space stuff. Now we're going to be defining a couple, just three tables, and those tables have already been defined here for the model mapper, which is one of the four APIs that I'm going to be taking you through. And so the next thing we need to do is actually to create that schema. So that schema 
is right here. Um, we don't want to copy paste the line number, so I'm just going to turn that off. You don't need this top line unless uh, if you're working with Astra, which you know you probably are because that's what this demo is for. But uh, in the event that you decide to create this using Datastax Desktop or or your local installation, of the CQL and Mapper APIs will work just the same as they do with Astra. So I left that in there if you want to just be able to copy paste it. So we're going to go back over to Astra. We're going to go to the CQL console. We're going to log in stuff user. Get logged in. Um, now I can just paste my uh, schema into this. Use stuff, desk tables. You can see that my tables did get defined. Users. You can see the, the full schema. All this other stuff, these are all default values that are uh, for us to tune that table. A lot of these we can't actually change in Astra because we've already gone to the work of trying to choose the best values for you. So really we're just paying attention to this part up here. So now we've defined that schema, we've configured the, uh, the application. Uh, now we're just going to run the tests and see, well actually one, one thing first, we have to do npm install to load all the additional libraries. Done, npm test, and cross our fingers. Boom, 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 boom. All of the table mapper functions, the GQL. So mostly passing tests. We had one failing here. The tests run very quickly, and sometimes um, it doesn't authentic authenticate correctly. If I rerun this test again, that'll probably pass, um, or something else might fail. Um, but by and large, uh, that's it. So now we know that uh, our, all of our APIs are working. We're able to authenticate and use REST, GraphQL, our CQL mapper and our CQL uh, you know, native language APIs. So let's take a quick look at the test file, uh, which is named after the file that it tested, table multi API. In this file, what we have is uh, sections of each API. So for example, all the GQL stuff is all together and it's create, read, update, delete. And then all the REST API functions are together, create, read, update, delete. And it's uh, against two tables each. I don't have 100% test coverage here. All the CQL functions, create, read, update, delete, same story. And then last, the CQL mapper functions, create, read, update, delete. So if you dig into these, it's in each of these tests, it's this middle line here. So all this other stuff is about defining the test. but. In each of these, you'll see something that looks like users.cqlmcreate, CQL mapper in this case, cqlmcreate here, and then read, read, update, update, delete, and delete, sorry, that line. I'll go backwards through the file. Here's the CQL, create, read, update, delete, and the uh, rest, create, read, update, delete, so you can see all those uh, sections. So uh, the sample data is up here at the top. If you want to look at that, that's in the sample data file. So now let's go take a look at the actual table multi API. Table multi API is the table where we've defined that class that we just ran through the test, uh, that test file. So we're calling new this thing. Here's a constructor, nothing magical there. Here, what we've done is uh, we've got the the each function to show off the create functions. So here's REST. This is what it looks like to use the REST API 
Um, there is a convenience function defined in another file I'll show you in a minute that goes through and um, allows this post to work. It does all the authentication, kind of takes some of the boilerplate out of your way so you can just focus on what's really unique to each of these uh, HTTP APIs. So that's the rest in the GraphQL. And um, this does look a little bit weird. I know the syntax uh, post and then that uh, returns a function which is then invoked here. Um, we've got the GQL create and then I've added a lot of additional comments to sort of show you what code is being created um, underneath. One thing I will point out is um, in the future we may have additional uh, versions of the REST or GraphQL API, so pay pretty close attention to the V1 here. Uh, that's This is our first version, and so in the future if that changes, um, you may be looking at V2 and the, these samples may not work quite the same. Coming down here to the, the CQL create, you can see we're just using uh, this insert into syntax, and we've got table name, fields, values. If you've ever worked with SQL before or done string interpolation with SQL, you probably have worked with similar syntax um, to this. And so what you can see here is here's the query that I just defined the, temp the template for here. And then I had placeholders, which I'm uh, injecting in as a second argument. And then this is prepared, uh, prepared true means it's a prepared statement. Um, I, I learned kind of the hard way that if you don't use prepared statements, sometimes it's difficult for the Node.js driver to, um, to know what types uh, are being in inserted in, and so it, it can throw some errors. But so as long as you do prepared true, um, the driver will have all the necessary knowledge about the schema in, to uh, properly build those queries. And last but not least is the CQL mapper. And this is actually my favorite, and it should be obvious why. It's super simple. Uh, this dot model map insert, and then I just took that Java or JSON object, or well, it's not JSON, it's JavaScript object, and it it mapped all those in for me. So if you look through the rest of this file, you'll see very similar a similar pattern. Here's the read functions. We start with REST again, GQL uh, or GraphQL is in the second section. CQL. And then last is the CQL mapper. Again, same thing with the update. And you can see the further down you fo the file you go, I, I've provided fewer and fewer comments because it's a lot of the same things over and over. And then we export. So as much as I really like the mapper API, I really wanted something just a little bit different. And here's why. If you look in the config.js file, with the mapper, you have to define uh, your mappings between model names and table names. You can have multiple tables listed, and there's several other configuration options which are documented right there. But for my purposes, I really just wanted to have a one-to-one -one mapping between the model name and the table name. I wanted them to be exactly the same. So I created, and I didn't want to have to define that configuration thing, which I guess is what programmers are good at. What was that? Uh, I wrote two whole files to eliminate uh, six lines of configuration. Yeah, that's, I know it's silly. But what did I do? In this file, there's a key space mapper. And what this does is it goes out and it introspects the system schema here. And it will build that configuration for me with the one-to-one -one mapping, just like I wanted. It also calls out to this uh, table mapper, because uh, it has to call that for each one of the tables in the key space and then that allows me to have that uh, if I use this key space mapper use the uh, table name like users dot insert without having to define that that little configuration option which now that I'm explaining it to you it sounds pretty silly that I wrote all of this to avoid six lines of configuration but you don't have to write those six lines of configuration if you don't want to, because I wrote two whole files to save you from that. Yeah, that's funny. Anyway, you may be also interested in knowing uh, about some of the utility functions here. Um, I'm just gonna very quickly run through some of these. Some of the most important ones, uh, chunks of boilerplate code that I have kind of taken away from you is the authenticate function. And then earlier you heard me reference the post function, which is all here. 
There are some standard HTTP headers that you have to provide with each request, this X Cassandra request ID and X Cassandra token. That's part of the authentication. I'm already doing all of that here, just sort of taking away, just again, just totally boilerplate, handling some HTTP errors through here, you know, not really doing a whole lot with them other than just sort of saying, hey, that's, that's what happened. And some other things are kind of important down here. This function right here, props to columns. The REST API wants, uh, I, I like providing uh, JavaScript object or JSON looking syntax, which is what this is. That's what you're gonna, usually gonna be working with in your programs is something that looks like this. However, the REST API wants you to provide uh, JSON that looks like this. And this is actually not uncommon. You'll find this in actually a lot of RESTful APIs that they like to use this sort of name, value, syntax, an array of those. And so this is just performing that mapping for you. Pass in the property object and it spits out this. Um, also, the GraphQL API really prefers camel case. It's kind of peculiar about that. And I, I don't know, I worked in Ruby for too long, and so I tend to prefer this uh, camel case syntax with underscores. And uh, I'm not sorry, not the camel case, the snake case is what it's called. And so I had to have a little function to do all those nice conversions for me. And last but not least, the GraphQL is kind of peculiar about the JSON syntax it wants. And so I wrote a conven convenience function here to make all the little minor conversions you have to make. So that's a quick tour of all Astra APIs, and I hope that you find this file useful in getting you up and running more quickly in your work with Datastax Astra. Thanks.